The West African subregion has endured decades of low economic performance and growth stunting civil unrest, if not civil war. Sierra Leone can give testimony to this. In 1991, an attempt to overthrow the government of former President Joseph Momo resulted in a civil war that lasted 11 years. It engulfed the country and left over 50,000 dead. The eastern and southern district of Sierra Leone are rich in diamonds and more importantly, are easily accessible to anyone with a shovel, a sieve and transport. Now, since their discovery in the early 1930s, diamonds have been critical to financing a continuing pattern of corruption at the expense of much-needed public services, institutions and infrastructure. Much like Liberia, Sierra Leone was hit with the Ebola epidemic, which brought many businesses to their knees and slowed down the country's economic growth. According to a joint report by the African Development Bank and Global Financial Integrity, a U.S. research and advocacy group, the bleeding of resources from Africa is about four times the current external debt of the continent. The common way illicit money is moved across borders is through international trade. But with good management and a new strategy, West Africa could be in a position to finance much of its own development. But this is largely dependent on member nations banding together to present a united front with an aim to end arbitrary nature of tax breaks. They can insist on corporate transparency when dealing with foreign direct investments and demand the highest standards of transparency from their governments. West Africa has enjoyed an unusually high rate of economic growth over the last decade. The region has enjoyed a steady growth of nearly 70% since 2012. ECOWAS has an ambitious agenda for regional integration, but it needs the support of the population and especially the private sector. The aim is to remove the physical, political and economic barriers that isolate nations from their neighbors. In 2013, five West African heads of state committed to the bold initiative of the Lagos-Abidjan Corridor, which is a six-lane superhighway that extends to connect all of the region. Even more significant, the road connects some of the continent's most vibrant seaports. It will facilitate trade, free movement, um, improve uh, business services, and um, certainly transportation costs will go down because of the ease of movement. The project is supposed to be a six-lane highway with a great deal of transport and trade facilitation components to make the road respond to the economic needs of the populations that surround this road. Strategic partnership between the public and private sector can fill the funding gap. The West African private sector can have a large share of the region's emerging markets and how to develop a macroeconomic policy that creates jobs in the real sector. But the targets are clear. The abolition of custom duties, adopting a common external tariff, and the adoption of protocols to consolidate free movement of persons in the region. If challenges are addressed, then it can lead to more trade and investment. It could also lead to shared resources and less conflicts across and within borders. No doubt, the adoption of an ECOWAS common trade policy will get us there. Now that we've understood the why, the what, and the where, this conference seeks to establish the how.